The Rock Ship of Masuda. The Rock Ship of Masuda, known in Japanese as Masuda no Iwafune, is a mysterious stone structure located in the village of Akusa in the Nara Prefecture of Japan. This region is known for its key-shaped earth mound monuments that date back to the period between 250 and 552 AD. However, the Rock Ship of Masuda stands apart in its composition and unknown construction. The rock itself is a massive block of granite, approximately 36 feet in length, 26 feet wide, and 15 feet high, weighing around 880 tons. Though its origin remains unknown, the rock ship was obviously created with a purpose in mind. The top of the stone has been flattened, and two square holes have been carved into it, with a ridge line parallel to both holes. At the base of the stone, there are lattice-shaped indentations believed to be related to the methods used to flatten the stone sides. The monolith's nickname, Rock Ship, likely stems from its ship-like appearance and proximity to the now-drained Lake Masuda. The stone surface is extremely hard and difficult to carve, leading scientists to regard the Rock Ship of Masuda as a technical marvel for its age. At first glance, the giant hunk of granite does not seem out of place. Masuda has existed for over a thousand years, and the area is dotted with different burial mounds. However, the Rock Ship of Masuda does not mark a grave. So the question remains. Who built it and why? Some scholars argue that it was intended as the marker for a large burial tomb, but no tomb or bodies have ever been found. Locals claim it was used as a Buddhist shrine. This claim is impossible to prove fully, since the rock ship lacks any resemblance to other ancient shrines. Others argue that the carefully carved piece of granite was used for astronomical observation. The carved ridge runs parallel to the mountains in the area and it lines up with sunset on the important farming day that signals the beginning of the agricultural season. A final theory is that the rock ship of Masuda was carved to honor Lake Masuda, which has since been destroyed by human development. Despite this variety of explanations, the true purpose for creating the rock ship of Masuda has been lost to history. The Forgotten Stone Anyone making the journey to the city of Baalbek in Lebanon will find themselves face to face with monoliths of truly epic proportions. The stones of Baalbek lie scattered around the area, discarded during their journey to the Temple of Jupiter over half a mile away. Among them can be found the largest stone ever quarried by human hands in history, the Forgotten Stone. All the stones found in Baalbek are massive, but the Forgotten Stone redefines the term enormous. Found buried next to a similarly colossal monolith known as the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, the Forgotten Stone is 55 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 18 feet high. Since it is still partially buried, archaeologists can only estimate its weight, but the stone is believed to weigh at least 1,650 tons. Even without the stones, Baalbek would be a mysterious place. Though the Romans built the Temple of Jupiter, the foundation it sits upon is believed to be much older. Called Heliopolis by the Romans who conquered it, the land around Baalbek is believed to have been settled by the Phoenicians, who arrived in the area over 3,000 years ago. The city itself can be found in the Bible, where it is called Balat. The biblical verses that mention the city claim that it was rebuilt by the legendary King Solomon. The origin of the foundations that lie under the Temple of Jupiter, however, remains unknown. The Romans carved the Forgotten Stone, but the reason behind its abandonment is still a mystery. The sheer size of the stone makes moving it a daunting task, even with modern equipment, and scholars continue to argue over how Roman engineers managed to move the forgotten stone to its final resting place. The answers may forever be lost to the sands of Baalbek. The Broken Menhir of Ergra The province of Brittany in France is home to one of the most extensive Neolithic sites in the world. Lying scattered and fractured in the middle of a field lies a massive relic of the skills and determination of the people of the Stone Age, the broken menhir of Agra. If it had remained standing, the menhir would tower above the surrounding landscape. At nearly 69 feet long, weighing around 350 tons and crafted in 4500 BCE, the giant column is the largest example of stonework ever created by Neolithic peoples. The broken menhir is part of a site known as the Loch Maria K Megaliths. The site is a thousand years older than Stonehenge and is a humbling monument to the abilities of our ancestors. 
The 460 foot long tumulus passage grave is nearly as old as the broken veneer and still holds the remains of domesticated cattle, interred forever in the earth for reasons unknown. Joining the passage is the merchant's table, a stone age tomb constructed from the ruins of the broken veneer itself. Both the tumulus passage and the merchant's table were finished with pieces of the broken veneer, meaning they were built after the monolith fell. But why was such a massive monument built in the first place, and why did it fall? The stones feature vague carvings of plows, but they have been so eroded that researchers cannot decipher further details. Popular theory claims the monument was torn down, perhaps by a rival tribe or a group offended by the message given by the presence of the monolith. Geologists, however, have a different theory. The mighty pillar was brought down by an earthquake, breaking it into four pieces as it collapsed. The Gate of the Sun While exploring the highlands of Bolivia in the 1860s, Ephraim George Squire stumbled upon an incredible sight. Looking for Incan relics, the American diplomat and explorer found himself in the ruins of an ancient city built by a long-lost empire. Sitting at over 12,000 feet above sea level near Lake Titicaca, Tiwanaku covers nearly one and a half square miles and is filled with the remains of ancient buildings and relics. Standing guard over the site is the most complete monument that can be found in the city, the Gate of the Sun. Nearly 10 feet tall, 13 feet wide, and weighing around 10 tons, the Gate of the Sun was carved from a single piece of stone. 48 squares are carved into the gate, each featuring an effigy. 32 of these effigies are fully human, while the other 16 have the heads of condors. They all look at the central figure, a man holding staffs representing rain and lightning. The man himself seems to represent the sun, and is likely a creator god. The purpose of the gate is unclear. Some scholars claim that it's a calendar, while others believe that it's an astronomy tool. Part of the confusion about the gate lies in where it stands. Modern research shows that the gate was probably not originally located where it is now, and was simply stood up by European explorers who found it toppled over in the 1800s. The Gate of the Sun is a mystery, but it is no more perplexing than the culture that built it. The city of Tiwanaku once held 20,000 people at its peak between 500 and 900 AD. It was part of the Tiwanaku Empire, which spanned western Bolivia from 600 to 1000 AD. Though they built large cities and crafted impressive monuments, they left no written trace of their legacy. The closest memory of the Tiwanaku Empire was held by the Incan people, who were influenced by the Tiwanakan culture and inherited many of their gods and beliefs. Spanish conquistadors were made aware of the Tiwanakan people during their conquest of the Inca. Pedro Siesa de Leon included the city of Tiwanaku in his notes on Peru, as his men hunted for the southern Incan capital. The Gate of the Sun is not the only impressive sight to be had at Tiwanaku. The city also contains the Puma Punku, the Gate of the Puma. A giant gathering place 550 feet wide and 380 feet long, Puma Punku features 65 foot wide projections in the north and south ends. Said to have been unimaginably wondrous at its peak, the Gate of the Puma contained polished metal, ornamented fabrics, and colored ceramics. It would have been filled with the wealthiest citizens of Tiwanaku, adorned in fine clothes and jewelry. Though historians are firm in their belief that the people of Tiwanaku used their own abilities to build the Gate of the Sun and the Gate of the Puma, another theory exists among the public. Due to its size and splendor, some claim that the Puma Punku and the Greater City were created with the support of giants, or even extraterrestrials. Though this theory of extraterrestrial involvement has no more weight than similar claims made at other sites, the lack of a written legacy left by the Tiwanakan people means that any theory made about the Gate of the Sun and the city that surrounds it will only ever be precisely that, a theory. The Unfinished Obelisk Roughly 3,400 years ago, the Kingdom of Egypt was ruled by the female pharaoh Hatshepsut. Ruling over the land of the Nile during one of its golden periods, Hatshepsut ensured that future generations would know her success by commissioning large construction projects. However, the final purpose of one of these projects remains unknown to this day, the unfinished obelisk. Laying incomplete in the quarries of Aswan, Egypt, the unfinished obelisk would have stood 137 feet tall if it had been completed. This would have made it the largest monument of its kind. Hatshepsut's monument would have towered above the other obelisks in Egypt, as it would have been 30 feet taller than any other finished obelisk. 
such a large monument would likely have been used to celebrate a significant event or person. What could have inspired Hatshepsut to commission this 1,200-ton behemoth? Abandoned after its base cracked during carving, the unfinished obelisk lacks any of the hieroglyphs that adorn its standing siblings. Though it provides a fascinating insight into how obelisks were made, the lack of any hieroglyphic text on the monolith means that the purpose of crafting such an excessive monument has been lost to time. Some historians claim this obelisk would have joined the Lateran obelisk, the tallest Egyptian obelisk ever to be raised at the Temple of Karnak. However, the Lateran obelisk was built after Hatshepsut died, and there are no records of a prolonged work project to commemorate the temple. Claims may continue to be made, but unless new documentation is found, the inspiration behind Egypt's tallest obelisk will remain hidden from history. Are you ready to unlock the secrets of the past? Subscribe now to Dark Five's brand new Ancient Mysteries channel and embark on a journey to uncover the most enigmatic and awe-inspiring mysteries of ancient times. Leave a comment if there are any ancient mysteries you want us to explore in upcoming videos.